Hi, I'm here to talk to you today about how my trip to Alaska changed me. Um, just a quick introduction, um, my name is Eric Montgomery. I'm a junior at the Rockdale Magnet School of Science and Technology. And freshmen at my school are required to take a little course we like to call AP Environmental Science, or APES for short. And during APES, you learn about different topics such as global warming, climate change, and sustainability. This set me up perfectly because the spring of my freshman year, I got the opportunity to enter an essay contest about sustainability in Alaska, and the winners of the essay contest got a free trip to Alaska. So I was excited, I wrote my essay and submitted it, and about two months later, I got an email saying that I was selected as a semi-finalist for the competition, and that in two days, I had to write a speech and present it in front of a panel of judges, and they decide whether I go to Alaska or not. So I wrote my speech, presented it to the best of my ability, and I heard my name called by the judges. That's when I realized I was going to Alaska. So, as shown by my expert drawing, um, it was a long journey. Um, the first leg of the journey was a flight from Atlanta to Seattle, which is about five and a half hours. Then it was a two hour flight from Seattle to Juneau, Alaska. And then the short distance here was a five hour ferry from Juneau, Alaska to Haines, Alaska, where our trip would be taking place. And although the journey was long, the ferry ride did look like this, so it wasn't too bad. So when we arrived in Alaska, we all got off the plane, or all got off the ferry, hopped on buses, and drove to where we'd be staying for the duration of the trip. And when we arrived, we arrived at this house in the woods. And this house at first unnerved me, because I realized we'd be staying there in this house in the woods. I, middle of nowhere, but this allowed us to get a true Alaskan experience during my stay. So throughout the trip, we did many different activities, um, new experiences for me every day, and I learned something new every day. One of the days, we went to a wildlife center, and there, there was a lot of animals from the Alaskan wilderness. There were foxes, bears, eagles, all these, all these northern animals I've never seen before in person, but I learned about in class. But there was more than just the factual information about these animals. We got to see different personalities. We got to see um, the differences between either species or individuals. Some love to be petted. Others will probably take their fingers off if you try to touch them. The different, the different personalities between each species and each individual, this allowed us to build a deeper connection than just reading about these animals in a book. Another thing we did, we went kayaking. Now, kayaking was an interesting experience for me because I've never been kayaking before. We went kayaking in a glacial lake, and this was formed from glaciers melting and the water pooling in a valley. And because we were in this valley, we got to see mountains around us, and this gave me a deeper sense of scale. I never realized how large these mountains were, and then deep in the mountains, I could see glaciers. And it surprised me that these massive structures were the things that I was learning that were melting. And this is another picture. Another thing we did is we went to the Jokat Kwan Heritage Center, which was a native tribe there. They've been there for tens of thousands of years, generations on generations. And it made me curious of how these people survived this long in this Alaskan climate. After all, Alaska isn't known for the most forgiving environment. However, I, I learned that they survived off the land around them. They lived off of the fish in the waters. They lived off of the berries in, in the woods. These different elements allowed them to survive and built traditions based off of the land around them. And this showed me a comparison with the town of Haines, which was also reliant on the area around them. Imported goods are very expensive or simply un unobtainable. So the people living there, they relied on fish in the water berries in the woods, and whatever they can find in the surrounding area. Now, another thing we did is that we went hiking. And hiking was a great experience for me. Um, I was reminded um, of our school motto of challenge, opportunity, and distinction. I was challenged by hiking this mountain. I had the opportunity to embarrass myself. And I distinctly <laughs> remember falling multiple times. <laughs> I decided to wear the wrong shoes during this trip. And don't let the picture fool you. It was way more um, challenging than this. However, I struggled greatly climbing up this mountain. Every step forward I felt like I took, 
I felt like I was taking three steps back from falling. But I pushed through step by step by step, and I eventually reached the top of this mountain. And at the top, I got to overview everything and see how much I see how much I just progress from climbing, even though I felt like I was going nowhere when I was climbing. The view was amazing, and I was relieved that I finally reached the top after all my struggles. But then I had to climb back down, and that's a different story. So like all trips, it had to come to an end. So toward the end of the week, we packed our stuff up and got ready for a long, long trip back to Atlanta. And even though the travel back wasn't super exciting, we didn't go hiking or see bears or anything, but it still, I still learned a lot. And this was from reflection and remembering my experiences. I remember why we were there. We were there to study how climate change is affecting Alaska. And I realized that the different experiences I had on the trip showed me that. Those animals that we connected with, those animals that I had fun with that day, those are the animals that are losing their habitats. Those are the animals that are being forced to move due to climate change. Those glaciers that I admired the size of, that I was wondered by, those are the glaciers that are disappearing, are melting. And speaking of the glaciers, the people who lived there and relied off of this land, been there for generations, had traditions based off of the land, that land is being destroyed. The glaciers that they're taking, that the people took pictures by, those are melting. They won't be able to share those traditions with their kids. And the people of Haines, the people of Haines are a very small and remote area. It's a thousand people. My high school have more people than the people of Haines. They aren't causing their issues. They can't, there's a thousand people. The major root of this issue are the people living where I live, the people living in major cities, the people or the factories that are burning fossil fuels and producing all this pollution. Those people are the ones causing the major changes. However, they aren't being affected, so they, still, they see no reason to change. The people in Haines, they notice the changes. They notice that their grandparents' picture next to the glacier looks different than their picture next to it and looks different than what's outside. They notice that fish are disappearing, but they can't do anything about it. This made me really sad at first because I realized that there was nothing I could do as an individual. I'm only one person. There's no way I could change how all these people live, especially when they have no motive. They didn't see what I saw, so why would they change? But then I remember climbing that mountain. I remember having to take, I remember falling. I remember it feeling like I would never reach the top. Every step I took felt like I took three steps back. But I remember keep, keeping pushing. I remember taking it step by step and eventually reaching the top of that mountain. I decided to apply this to the fight for climate change. I figured that if we took little steps, we could eventually reach the top of this fight. So I started applying it to my own life. I decided to turn off lights, turn off water, reducing my carbon footprint as much as possible. I even went vegetarian recently after realizing how much pollution the animal industry causes. These little steps may seem insignificant, but if done by a large majority, can really make a difference. And we can all reach the top of this mountain. And I can assure you the view is beautiful. Thank you. <laughs>